Hey guys, this is Kerry, and in this video, we're going to be uh, creating the less than a dollar store change app. So the idea in this store is that you can only pay less than a dollar, so maybe you pay something like uh, 94 cents. And then the cost of that item might actually be anything less than a dollar as well, uh, I don't know, 30 cents. So notice that we're not using decimals here, we're just computing it in cents. So I'm just gonna get rid of this because I'm doing a second take of the video, so sorry. In this case, we would owe 64 cents. And there's many ways to make 64 cents using the standard denominations. But what we want to figure out is the most efficient way to make 64 cents. So maybe that would be like, it's kind of a tough example. Let's look instead at an easier example, 98 cents paid, 90 cents cost. So to make change for this, we could use eight pennies, but a better route would be five, or sorry, one nickel and three pennies. So we want the computer to be able to do all of that without us thinking. So let's jump over to the app now and start to code it. So uh, I'm gonna set up my JavaScript tags and I'm gonna think about all the things on the page that I need to interact with because I need to select all of those things. So first off, we need to select uh, these two input boxes. Because we're gonna be adding values to those and we're gonna need to be getting the values from those. So whenever we select something, we go to the toolbox and it sounds like that's going to be document.querySelector. So uh, this one is going to be getting the paid input box. And that's coming from the thing with ID hashtag paid input. This one's going to be the cost input. And that's going to be coming from the thing with ID hashtag cost input. Um, so what's important to remember is when we select this thing with ID paid input, we're actually uh, selecting that whole box, not just the value itself. So next up, we need to uh, make sure that we are selecting these four trays, these number bins, because we're going to be changing how many quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies we need. So select the number bins. So again, we're using document.querySelector, and uh, we'll have four of them, but they're going to be similar. So I'm just going to say... The first one it looks like is zero from quarters count. So I'm just gonna call this quarters count. And that's gonna be the thing with ID quarters count. And since all of them are gonna be very similar to this, I'm gonna select these and make it dimes count, nickels count, and pennies count. So the last thing that we're going to be interacting with on the page is the button that we click. So select the button. Oh, and number bins. Wow, I haven't slept enough, I guess. But select the number bins. Select the button. So let button equal document dot query selector. Uh, we're going to be selecting the only button on the page. So rather than using an ID to select it, I'm just going to select it by using its element type. So the la la next thing, sorry, the next thing that we're going to be doing is uh, we need to listen for clicks on that button. So that seems like an event listener. So we grab our event listener from toolbox, the whole thing, and we're going to pretty paste command shift V that event listener into our code. So add a click event to the button. So when we add the click event to the button, we say the button should be listening for a click event. And then our procedure goes here. So if you think about making change, um, when we make change, the first thing that we need to be able to do is we need to actually extract the values from here. So let's just do our example, 98 and 90. So uh, to extract those values, it looks like we've got two input elements and to get the values from inputs, um, right here, for finding the value of an input element. So let's let paid equal the paid input value. So just to draw the distinction, paid input is the whole box that's highlighted in blue. Paid is going to be just the value, 98. But we want the computer to make sure that it sees 98 as a number. So what we're going to do is we're going to say make the number version of whatever that value is stored in paid. And then we're going to do the same thing for cost. Ah, shoot. 
uh, cost, sorry, I keep changing in the wrong place, cost and cost input. And that's going to take uh, this 90 from the entire cost input box, which is in blue, and it's going to convert it to a number if it wasn't already a number. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, compute the total change. So in this case, the total change should be 98 cents paid, cost was 90, it's going to be paid minus cost. So let total change equal paid minus cost. And then finally to test it, let's alert out total change is plus whatever the value from total change was, semicolon, and refresh. So 98, 90, make change, total change is 8. 98, and I don't know, let's say it costs 25 cents, the total change is 73. It looks like things are working perfectly. But now comes the harder part of the project, which is how do we establish the number of quarters, the number of dimes, the number of nickels, and the number of cents? Um, so to do that, we're going to actually jump over to another file, and we're going to do something called pseudocode, basically. So with pseudocode, um, the idea is it might be hard to program this all in JavaScript immediately, so we should think through our thought process a little bit more carefully uh, and get everything right. So in this case, uh, let's see. Let's go through an example first. So total change is what we know. And we know that in this case the total change is 73 cents. So we want to figure out the number of quarters, the number of nickels, the number of dimes, the number of pennies. Now you could easily just say pennies is equal to 73 and the rest are zero. But that would be like the worst way to make change. So a better way to make change is instead of starting with the pennies, to start with the quarters. So you could think, well, if I have 73 cents worth of change that I need to make, how many quarters fit into that? So you could try it, one quarter definitely fits, two quarters would be 50 cents, so that fits, three quarters is 75 cents, so that's too much. So two quarters. Um, after we do two quarters worth, that's going to account for 50 cents of change. So the leftover is going to be, uh, let's see, 73 minus 50, 23 cents worth of change. Now if we have 23 cents worth of change, then we're going to need to worry about the dimes next. So for dimes, how many dimes can fit into that? Uh, that's going to be two dimes, which accounts for 20 cents. And then the leftover is going to be those three remaining cents. And then the next part is nickels. Well, no nickels fit into three cents, so our leftover is still going to be three, and then we'll finish it off by saying pennies is equal to three. Now, you may have to do a bunch of examples like this. You might want to do it with uh, eight cents or 40 cents or whatever. Um, but if you do it enough times, I think you start to get the hang for what's actually happening in your brain. And this is like the part of computer science that might be most interesting to me, uh, which is computer science can sometimes teach you how you think about things. And I think as a teacher, that's really interesting. So when we were doing this, we might not actually be even aware of what calculations our brain is doing as we go through this problem. So let's see if we can figure out what our brain was actually doing. So we start off with the total change, and that was you know some number. In this case, it was 73. Um, and then we tried to compute how many quarters were left, or quarters could fit into that. Now, we just kind of counted it up, but that would be hard to teach a computer to do. So we're trying to figure out how many quarters fit into this, and that should remind you a little bit of division. So let's see. Uh, if we had 73 cents and we divided that by 25, that would give us 2.92 quarters. Of course, we can't give change in decimals like parts of quarters, so we'd have to just take the two. So the quarters is going to be equal to the total change divided by 25 cents, because that will tell us how many times 25 cents goes into that. Now, um, this is a little bit tricky. We don't want the decimal part. We only want the number that comes in front. And you probably don't know a mathematical function that would just take the number part of this and not the decimal part, but there is one. And that function is called the floor function. So what the floor function does is it just, you know, it rounds it down no matter what. It rounds it to the floor, which would be 2 in this case. So even though this should round to 3, the floor function will round that down to 2. Um, so then after we do this division, 
it looks like what we're left with um, should be 23 cents. And if you're thinking a little bit about yesterday's lesson with the calculator, um, then that kind of should remind you of remainders, right? So after we divide by 25, the remainder is 23, which should make you think about mod. Um, so 73 mod 25 gives us the remainder of 23. So the leftover is going to equal the remainder when we do this division. So it'll be the total change. And then to get the remainder after dividing, we do mod 25. Um, and now we're going to need to do something similar with dimes. But in this case, dimes is going to be equal to what we get when we divide the total change. But it's no longer the total change. Now it's the leftover by 10. And then the new value for the leftover is going to be whatever we got when we divided this leftover by 10, the remainder. So let's just see that in action. If we take the leftover, that would be 23. We divide that by 10. 23 divided by 10 gives us 2.3. Then we do the floor function to that, so it's just 2. So we get 2 dimes. Uh, and then we say whatever that leftover was, 23. If we mod that by 10, we should get a remainder of 3 cents. And we do. So that's where mod comes into play. And I think I'm starting to get the hang for what this overall procedure might look like. So at this point in the pseudocode, I think we can jump straight to the code. So let's go back to our ChangeMaker app. So currently we've got the total change. Let's compute the number of quarters we need. So let quarters equal um, total change, we said. I'm just going to actually move our pseudocode over here so we can see it. It's going to equal total change divided by 25, but then we're going to need to apply this floor function. And in JavaScript, we write that math.floor. Um, now to get the leftovers, we'll say let leftover equal whatever the total change was, mod 25. So it will be the remainder when we divide by 25. Uh, and then we do the same thing, let dimes equal math.floor, the total number of dimes that divides. Oh, it's not total change anymore, right? It's now the leftover amount. And we're going to try to divide that by 10. We're going to try to figure out how many times 10 goes into that. And then we're going to be left with a new value for leftover. And since I've already declared leftover, I don't need to write let anymore in front of it. So now the leftover is going to be equal to uh, the old value of leftover. When we divide it by 10, the remainder. And for nickels, it's going to be equal to math.floor the leftover divided by 5, how many times 5 goes into the new leftover. And then the new leftover after that is going to be the remainder when we divide by 5. And then finally, let's let pennies equal uh, whatever the leftover is. We'll just make it with pennies because we don't have any other options. And then the last thing is that we need to do is we actually need to insert these in to these boxes. And that sounds like we're going to be changing the HTML, changing the content of these, the inner HTML of these elements. So to changing inner HTML, we use this. So insert the values into the slots. So uh, the quarters count is going to be equal to whatever quarters was. The dimes count, the inner HTML of that is going to be equal to whatever the number of dimes was. The nickels count is going to be equal, dot, the inner HTML of that, oh gosh, the inner HTML of that is going to be equal to whatever number of nickels we computed. The pennies count is going to be equal to, the, sorry, the inner HTML of that is going to be equal to however many pennies we counted. So let's see if things work. So give it a save. Let's say we paid, I don't know, what was our example? 73 cents of total change. So that could be done with like, you know, 93 and 20, that would be 73 cents of change. So total change is 73. It says to make that we use two quarters, two dimes, three pennies. Um, and we want to test this using all of our cases. 99, um, and I don't know, 90 cents. Let's see what that does. Total change would be nine cents, zero quarters, zero dimes, one nickel, four pennies. And it's kind of awesome to see these pop up. Uh, let's see, we could run into some problems with this code where what if they try to pay 78 cents and the cost is 90? Let's see what happens to our code then. Total change is negative 12. And that's not quite what we wanted to have happen. 
So I think this is a fun error for you to try to fix, maybe if you knew some more JavaScript. But we could imagine that the clerk at our, our dollar store might be smart enough to catch it, where they wouldn't even type in these values. So we're not going to debug this error together, but you could debug it on your own. One more example of how it works, uh, I don't know, 99, and I don't know, let's say it costs one cent. The worst possible case here, that'd be 98 cents of change, three quarters, so you could test it out here just to make sure it works. Three times 25 plus two times 10 plus zero times five plus three times one, and that should be giving us 98 cents worth of change. Yeah, so our app works pretty well, uh, and that's pretty awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in class.